Right, the reverse side of this lovely uh, Columbia Graphophone uh, Limited Record, International Educational Society. So it's one of those uh, series of records at Petit France, London, Southwest One. That's uh, Westminster, in other words. And uh, John Drinkwater reading his poems. And uh, this one, this side starts with Cotswold Love. Kaiser over Cotswold and April snows go by. The lasses turn their ribbons for Aprils in the sky. And April is the season when Sabbath girls are dressed, from Rodbury to Camden in all their silken best. An ankle is a marvel when first the buds are brown, and not a lass but knows it from Stowe to Gloucester town. Another girl goes walking along the Cotswold lanes, but knows men's eyes in April are quicker than their brains. It's little that it matters so long as you're alive, if you're 18 in April or rising 65, when April comes to Amberley with skies of April blue, and Cotswold girls are briding with slyly tilted shoe. Anthony Crumble, the inscription from a Gloucestershire churchyard tomb. Here lies the body of Anthony Crumble, the farmer of this parish, who died in 1849 at the age of 82. He delighted in music, R.I.P., and of Susan for 53 years his wife, who died in 1860, aged 86. Anthony Crundle of Dorrington Wood played on a piccolo. Lord was he for 70 years of sheaves that stood under the Perian cider tree. Anthony Crundle, R.I.P. And because he prospered with sickle and scythe, with cattle afield and laboring new, Anthony was uncommonly blithe and played of a night to himself and soon. Anthony Crundle, 82. The earth to till and a tune to play and Susan for 50 years and three and Darrington Wood at the end of day. May Providence do no worse by me. Anthony Crundle, R.I.P. Mrs. Willow. Mrs. Thomas Willow seems very glum. Her life perhaps is very lonely and humdrum, digging up potatoes, cleaning out the weeds, doing the little for a lone woman's needs. Who was her husband? How long ago? What does she wonder? What does she know? Why does she listen over the wall, morning and noontime and twilight and all, as though unforgotten were some footfall. Good morning, Mrs. Willow. Good morning, sir, is all the conversation I can get from her. And her path stones are white as lilies of the wood. And she washes this and that till she must be very good. She sends no letters and no one calls. And she doesn't go whispering beyond her walls. Nothing in her garden is secret, I think. That's all sunbright with foxglove and pink. And she doesn't hover round old cupboards and shelves, as old people do who have buried themselves. She has no late lamps, and she digs all day and polishes and plants in a common way. But glum she is, and she listens now and then for a footfall, a footfall, a footfall again. And whether it's hope or whether it's dread, or a poor old fancy in her head, I shall never be told, it will never be said. Mamble. I never went to Mamble that lies above the team, so I wonder who's in Mamble and whether people seem who breed and brew along there as lazy as the name, and whether any song there sets alehouse wits aflame. The finger post says Mamble, and that is all I know, the narrow road to Mamble, and should I turn and go to that place of lazy token that lies above the team, there might be a mamble broken that was a lissom in a dream. So leave the road to mamble and take another road to as good a place as mamble, be it lazy as a toad. Who travels Worcester County takes any place that comes when April tosses bounty to the cherries and the plums. 